Hello, this little video will show the construction details and operation of two low voltage Tesla coils, also called Slayer exciters. The coil on the left, the black one you see, is actually a modified Tesla coil of my own building some years ago. The, the taller coil on the right is purpose built to be a Slayer exciter. Construction is basically the same. You can see here the base is made of the PVC tubing, elbows, uh, X-joint. This one had an extra T-joint on the side so that I could put a uh, small fluorescent tube here. And it uh, merely fits in this hole here. It doesn't connect to anything. But it will light up shortly when the uh, Slayer Exciter is activated. You'll notice there's no top load. The wire simply terminates in the air like an antenna. And energy from the coil will radiate from the uh, sides and top of the coil into the air and cause the fluorescent tubes to glow. The uh, purpose-built tube is the same, only larger. It uh, does not have the black coating, which is actually a rubberized undercoating used for automobiles. When building a Tesla coil, you want to keep the energy in the coil and not have any flashes or arc overs from the, uh, from the coil. So that was more heavily insulated. Here you want energy radiating from the coil uh, as freely as possible, so the uh, magnet wire is not coated with the undercoating here. The um, primary coil you see there is about six turns of 12 gauge uh, household wiring wire. And here it's harder to see because it's black, but the primary is wrapped directly on the secondary and consists of about four turns of 12 gauge household wire. Because of the low voltages used in a Slayer Exciter, you can mount the primary directly on top of the secondary. You don't have to worry about uh, flashover or arcing like you would in a high voltage Tesla coil. All these devices are driven by these uh, special circuit boards. Here's one version. My daughter built this for her science fair project. As you can see there's a wiring block and uh, a resistor pair of high-speed diodes, a transistor, in this case a 2N3055 power transistor. Now the output is routed, as it says here, you see it says secondary. This goes to the base connection of the secondary coil. Two connections labeled primary, the red wire goes to the, is the positive input and goes to the bottom of the coil the bottom. This is actually important. If you reverse the connections, the Slayer Exciter won't work. The white wire is the upper end of the coil. Okay. The uh, circuit board for the tall Slayer Exciter is identical except for it has a different uh, transistor. This is a TIP 31C and otherwise the connections and uh, wiring is all the same. These uh, heat sinks you see I salvaged from old television sets and uh, they're necessary because even operating at low voltages the uh, transistors can heat up and you don't want that to happen if you can help it. Here we have uh, my sort of experimental Slayer Exciter board and it's designed so that the transistor can be easily removed and replaced with another. And instead of having hard wires out to the uh, connections, I have put these posts. So I can just use uh, jumper wires and alligator clips. But they're labeled the same way, secondary, primary plus, primary negative. Now all of these boards are powered by simple DC connections. Here I have a, a 6 volt battery, lantern battery, 9 volt 
transistor batteries. You can also use a wall wart, a wall transformer of uh, appropriate voltage. Uh, this is actually officially is rated at four and a half volts at 1.5 amps. It actually puts out close to seven volts, but uh, that'll work as well. But for now, I'm going to show you uh, with batteries. I'll use the uh, the bigger coil. This is the positive connection. And before I connect the uh, negative pole, I'm going to turn the light out so it'll make the fluorescent tube a little more visible. And there we have our connection. Now the coil is activated. And here I have a fluorescent tube. I'll try to bring it near the Slayer exciter. It glows. In fact, it glows quite brightly all along its length. Here's a slight rippling effect. You can see, I hope, hopefully you can see in the, uh, in the camera. Now if you, uh, this is a regular four foot fluorescent tube. If you uh, move it carefully and lie it down here by the secondary connection, it will actually keep glowing even if you uh, stop holding it. Holding the tube is actually uh, an important aspect of it since your body is providing the ground. Here is a uh, ring light. You can see the ripple effect again. So uh, high frequency electricity is radiating from this all along its length and from the top, top wire. Um, I don't feel anything in my hands from that. Um, if you touch metal objects in the field, you can get uh, high frequency uh, electrical burns. This has not happened to me, but I've heard of it happening to other people. You can see the light is still glowing. The range, I'll pick this up again, the range of the electrical field um, varies with the uh, intensity of the voltage input. But here you see this is about four inches from the coil. I'm going to move it away. You can see it's still glowing. It's faint, it's faint, it's faint. And you can't perhaps tell in, by the camera, but that's out. There's no glow now. I'll move it back. and it lights up. With some transistors there's actually a sweet spot. If you can get closer it gets dimmer. It's brighter here and then it gets dimmer out here as well. So there's a the brightest spot is at about a range of about five inches. Now I'm going to um, disconnect this particular coil and I'm going to go to this smaller coil it's a little awkward to do with one hand but I'm going to uh, activate it now here you can see the uh, the little tube is lit up due to its close proximity to the coil. The um, coil will also light up the big tube as well. It doesn't really have enough output to light them both very well. I feel like the output of the smaller coil is diminished by the uh, rubber coating, but uh, as you can see, it does still work. There's a pronounced uh, hot spot right there. You get close, it almost goes out. And then right there, it's, it's bright. And out there, it's dim again. So again, the same distance of about 
five or six inches. So that is the operation of the Slayer Exciter. You can use voltages much higher. This is of course 9 volts. I've used as much as 24 volts through these. The effect is to make a brighter, give the brighter glow to the tubes at a greater distance. But uh, you do risk overheating your transistor and burning them out. Thanks for watching.